Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought a very nice challenge uh, uh, from gravitation and it's my original challenge and I'm sure you're gonna like it so <laughs> why not press the thumbs up icon right in the start so without much ado let me straight away get into the problem uh, okay let's see so here's the challenge that I've created and this is gravitational force on spherical sector okay so what's a spherical sector? Uh, all of you are aware of sector of a circle. So similarly, a uh, spherical sector is a kind of uh, spherical cone. I mean, it's not a perfect cone, but there's some additional mass on it. So this is called a spherical sector, okay? And uh, let's uh, see what is being asked here. So from a homogeneous complete solid sphere of original mass M, a spherical sector of a semi-vertex angle theta is removed and then filled with some other homogeneous material having total mass M so as to complete the sphere once again okay so what we did we had a complete sphere the black whole thing was like kind of black material you can say and we hollowed out this much and then we poured in let us say from glass we uh, removed something and then we poured out plastic this much plastic okay so hollowed out and put, poured in some other material so original sphere when the whole thing was glass that had got a mass of capital m right initial mass was capital m and something was removed and the new mass that is filled here by replacing this mass is small m okay okay so having total mass m so as to complete the sphere once again and now whole thing is again a sphere calculate the gravitational force on the material in the spherical sector due to the rest of the sphere so we have to find the force on this much due to the gray part okay or blackish part okay or you can say plastic force on the plastic due to the glass portion okay and the radius of the sphere is given as r so this radius is r so if you want you can give it a try and i'll present my analysis uh, right away so let's see okay so my solution will consist of uh, three steps what are those three steps initially i'll not consider different material initially i'll fill it with the same material and try to find the force between the uh, this sector and the rest of the uh, sphere if it were the same material okay so First step is assuming the sector of same material as rest of the sphere and finding the attraction between the two parts. This will involve center of mass. So you might not be immediately clear how I am going to involve center of mass. But as I uh, go with the derivation, you will see how I will be relating it to center of mass. Uh, uh, how I will bring center of mass term in the force of attraction that you will be able to see shortly. So that will be my first step. Then the second step will be locating the center of mass of spherical sector. So I, I'll express the force in terms of center of mass, but then I'll also need to need to locate the center of mass to be able to find the force exactly. So I'll locate the center of mass of the spherical sector. That will be the second step. And the third step will be using scaling arguments to find the force when the original material is replaced by the new material. So finally, I'm going to uh, scale up or scale down according to the replacement of material with the new material okay so these are the three steps and let's look at all these steps one by one pay very careful attention and stay tuned till end okay okay so now uh, let's say uh, i filled this one with the original material once again and let's say i consider a small mass dm over here okay let me use another color so i am considering a small mass dm over here and I'm trying to find out the force on this dm due to the rest of the sphere. Okay, so what is the field inside a sphere? So all of you know the standard uh, uh, formula for field inside a sphere. That is, uh, the field is given as a g vector is equal to gmr by capital R cube. If you want, you can put a minus sign to signify that it's attractive. But uh, yeah, uh, better to put a minus sign. So let it be everywhere. I can put a minus sign. So let it be. I'm interested in magnitude, so don't worry too much about minus signs. I might have messed up in many places so i'm just uh, interested in finding the force okay so what is the force on this small element this uh, force will be minus gmr by capital r cube that's the field and this if you multiply by dm that will give you the force on this dm right so what is the total force so you need to integrate this whole thing over the entire sector right so i can say that total force is minus gm by r cube and integration of r dm now integration of rdm immediately starts to tickle you right because you get these types of terms when you find the center of mass so what i can do i can divide this whole thing by the mass of this entire sector and multiply this thing by the mass of the entire sector why so what happens something beautiful has happened see so this becomes the position vector of the center of mass of the sector okay so i can say that this force is uh, 
जी एम बाई आर क्यूब इन टू मास ऑफ सेक्टर इन टू पोजिशन पोजिशन वैक्टर ऑफ द सेंटर ऑफ मास सो अगेन यू कैन इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन पुट अ माइनस साइन टू बी वैक्टोरियली करेक्ट ओके सो आई होप यू गॉट दिस वन नाउ सम स्टूडेंट्स माइट हैव अ डाउट ओवर हेयर वॉट इज दैट दिल से दैट दे माइट से दैट वेन यू आर टेकिंग दिस this uh, expression this includes the force on this dm not only because of the uh, complementary sector this one but it also includes the field produced by the other elements of the sector itself right so how do we explain that so the i mean i hope you got the objection the objection is that this field is not only the field due to the remaining sector it is also the field due to the same sector itself so how can we get the correct uh, uh, force on this one upon integration so now the thing is when you are taking the summation over all the elements you know that the internal forces are action reaction pairs so when you take the summation over all the entire sector itself so all the internal forces will add up to zero so uh, we are safe okay so yeah, even though uh, seemingly a fallacy but there's no fallacy why because uh, the some compensation happening because internal forces add up to zero so uh, this is the force uh, function this force that is expressed in the terms of mass of sector if the material is same okay so now we need to uh, calculate the rcm and if i calculate the rcm and substitute here and i substitute the value of m sector then of course i'll get the force between this part and this part two parts okay and then we'll use the scaling argument later on okay so now let me uh, work to find out the mass of the sector so mass of the sector how can we find out so you see mass of the sector is going to be proportional to this solid angle right so the solid angle of the entire sphere is 4 pi sta radians and if the semi vertex angle if you take as theta let's say this uh, semi vertex angle is theta then uh, the solid angle of this is 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta right so uh, okay so if uh, uh, theta is pi so that becomes 4 pi right so so fractional mass of this sector uh, fraction of the entire sphere will be simply 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta that is the solid angle of the sector divided by the total solid angle multiplied by the total mass so this becomes m by 2 into 1 minus cos theta right so that's the mass of the sector and i'll be using this later on so mass of the sector is given by this equation number 3 okay now coming to the second step that is finding the uh, location of center of mass of the spherical sector so what i am go going to do for finding the center of mass i am again going to use a technique instead of finding the center of mass of a solid uh, uh, sector i am going to find the center of mass initially for cap of a spherical shell and then i'll try to relate the solid uh, uh, thing with uh, cap of the spherical shell okay so cap of spherical shell means if i only have this much surface kind of material and i'm i'm going to find out its center of mass first of all and you might be wondering how how that will help in finding the center of mass of the solid this thing so uh, don't worry I, i'll show you step by step logically how to find this center of mass so what i'm going to do finding the center of mass of spherical sector uh, first we shall find cm of the spherical cap of a shell and then use it to find center of mass of a solid sector so let's say i have a, a spherical cap of semi vertex angle let us say theta so i consider an element between uh, phi and d phi it's a ring shape element so it's an annular region around uh, uh, this vertical line between phi and phi plus d phi okay and by the definition of center of mass you know that ycm is integral ydm upon integral dm so in this case let us say sigma is the mass per unit area so the slant height is r d phi and uh, then uh, this radius is 2 pi uh, uh, this is r sin phi so the area of this annulus becomes uh, r d phi into 2 pi r sin phi right and when you multiply the area by the aerial mass density that becomes the dm of this one right so that's the dm and what about the y of y here is the cent coordinate of center of mass of the element so y is some nothing but this is r so this is r cos phi right so uh, this i can substitute uh, in for y and dm i can substitute in this equation so that that simplifies to this and i need to integrate between the limits 0 to theta okay because semi vertex angle is theta so for uh, cap of a spherical shell the center of mass happens to be r by 2 into 1 plus cos theta okay so i found for sp spherical cap now i am going to extend uh, some logic to find it for the solid sector from cap of the shell to solid sector so what i can do you see the solid sector i can divide into several cones small small cones i can insert in this 
so i can imagine it to be made up of so many cones okay like a bundle of beads or something like that you can think so uh, there are so many cones inside this and where is the center of mass of a cone so center of mass of a cone is located at 3h by 4 from the apex or h by 4 from the uh, base so if this cone has got a height uh, in this direction let us say r so then center of mass of this cone must be at 3r by 4 similarly every cone can be replaced by center of mass at 3r by 4 so then what will happen if you imagine this to be made up of so many cones then and center of mass of each cone is at uh, 3r by 4 so the entire solid uh, sector can be replaced by just a cap at radius 3r by 4 okay and i have already worked out the result for cap so i, I immediately have the center of mass of this solid sector okay so that that's what i have written see uh, now for solid sector we can break it into several solid cones each with center of mass at a distance 3r by from apex so entire solid solid cone can be transformed into spherical cap of radius 3r by 4 okay so now using equation 4 so equation 4 was uh, center of mass for a spherical cap so instead of r i just need to substitute it by 3r by 4 right so that's what i have done so 1 by 2 into 1 plus cos theta and instead of r there is 3r by 4 so this is 3r by 8 into 1 plus cos theta and this is the location of center of mass of the uh, uh, solid sector right and you can readily observe that when theta is 90 degree this reduces to the result of a hemisphere that is 3r by 8 right so i hope the center of mass location is uh, pretty clear now we come to the scaling argument because uh, we have some different material instead of the original material now what happens imagine a pair of particles uh, uh, applying force let us say from the black portion uh, there is uh, some uh, in the black portion there is some mass let us say mi and in this uh, the plastic portion there is some mass mj so what is the force of attraction between this pair that is proportional to the product of mi into mj precisely speaking it is g mi mj r ij squared right so we can say that it is proportional to the product of these two masses similarly for every pair it will be proportional to the product of the masses of the uh, pair so now uh, the masses in the black part are unchanged but here all the masses have been scaled up or scaled down depending on whether you fill it with a lighter material or the heavier material so we just need to scale up the force by factor of the new sector mass divided by the old sector mass right because earlier force was proportional to the mass of the original sector and the new force will be proportional to the mass of the new sector so we we find the old force and just multiply that by the uh, the ratio of new sector mass to the old sector mass right so i hope you got that argument so that's what i have written now fij is proportional to mi mj so if mj is scaled up the net force is also scaled up by the same factor so now using equation 1 so let me just remind what was the equation 1 that was uh, the, what we derived using the concept of center of mass we involved there so f is gm by r cube into mass of sector into position vector of center of mass and mass of sector i already derived in equation 3 and i derived the position of center of mass in equation 5 as i showed you earlier you just for a review i can just show you here so this was the location of center of mass and the mass of the sector was calculated here m by 2 into 1 minus cos theta so now just plug in chug and what do you get uh, so force for the original one so instead of sector mass i have put m by 2 into 1 minus cos theta rcm i have put 3r by 8 into 1 plus cos theta so this was the original force when the material was not replaced okay but if you replace the material then you need to multiply it by the mass of the new sector divided by mass of the old sector so that's what i have written so new force must be equal to old force multiplied by the mass of new sector divided by mass of the old sector so new mass is given as small m and the mass of old sector was m by 2 into 1 minus cos theta right so we just scale up uh, with this and what do we get so you just plug in the values and this is what you get as the new force so Uh, this is our final answer force is 3 gmm gmm by 8 r square into 1 plus cos theta so that's my final answer and uh, i hope you enjoyed my analysis and uh, if you did enjoy the analysis which i am sure you must have enjoyed i worked really hard for it and thought a lot about how to work it out so uh, i'm sure you enjoyed this and so please uh, hit the like button immediately and uh, please share this video as much as possible uh, with your friends who are preparing for je or olympiads through whatsapp discord telegram or whatever medium you might be using for networking with your fellow students 
so that others can also benefit and uh, most importantly to keep me motivated please uh, subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day my channel is not monetized and uh, the subscriptions and the likes and the comments that i uh, receive is the uh, is the money that i make out of my channel so uh, please do subscribe and please uh, help me grow this channel through subscriptions uh, and uh, recommendations okay and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you